ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. And with that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins and to keep us firm upon this religion that He has chosen for us, <coughs> the religion of Islam. At this present moment, I was asked actually in this program here, in this small seminar, to address our noble sisters in Islam, give them some advice. Even though we're addressing our noble sisters in Islam, but these advice are for all of us, brothers and sisters. Even though, inshallah ta'ala, maybe in some parts of this talk, we may address the sisters in a way but in general this apply on us even those things that I may say that are advices to our sisters we brothers we can benefit from them because we have mothers we have wives for those who are married and some of us have daughters we have sisters and we need to learn these things as well so we say and we ask tawfiq from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask Allah to put on my tongue that which is beneficial for myself, for my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. So therefore we say to you sisters, my dear sisters in Islam, as this topic of this seminar is At-Tariqu ila jannah the path that leads to the Jannah. We remind you as well that being a woman, you are a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has created you for a purpose, for a reason to, to worship Him alone as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ insa illa لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinn and the human being except to worship Him قَالَ إِبْنُ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا one of the great companions of the Prophet وسلم, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum says لِيَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ لِيُوَحِدُونَ He says to worship me meaning through the Tawheed through Islamic monotheism Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala has made this clear in his book Al-Qawaid Al-Arba' the four principles he's from that which he says اعلم أن العبادة لا تسمى عبادة إلا مع التوحيد كما أن الصلاة لا تسمى صلاة إلا مع الطهارة He says any act of worship is not considered sound and therefore would not benefit the person who performed that act of worship whether it be the prayer, fasting, hajj, zakat without tawheed It would be of no benefit without tawheed without that person be upon Islamic monotheism worshipping Allah alone by devoting and performing all acts of worship not just some of them all of them for Allah alone he says the same way Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahimahullah says the same way the Salat it will be of no benefit for a person even if a person pray but if they don't pray with tahara, no purification. Even they perform the prayer, but it's not going to be counted. Because tahara is a condition for the acceptance of the deeds. Actually, tahara is a condition. Let me, I made a mistake. Let me rephrase that. The tahara purification is a condition for the salat to be 
accepted. Likewise, Tawheed is the condition for all actions of worship to be accepted. فلهذا أول نصيحة أن تهتم بهذا الأمر العظيم وهو التوحيد توحيد الله سبحانه وتعالى So therefore the first advice for you my sister in Islam and this advice is for all of us for myself first and most is that you have to take good care and give much importance to this subject matter which is a tawheed why? Because this is the most important things in our lives. This is what every single prophet and messenger began with. Actually, they spent their lives calling the dear people to Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nahl, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْدَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ and we have sent among every nation a messenger. It is a messenger sent by Allah to the people. We have sent among every nation a messenger saying to his people, worship Allah alone and avoid ta'ud, meaning avoid worshiping anything else. This is tawheed. Call to tawheed and warning against shirk. And every single prophet and messenger in his da'wah, when he is calling the people to Allah, every one of them said to his people, Ya qawm, ya'budu allaha, wa'budu allaha ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. Worship Allah, you have no true God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this matter of tawheed is so important, you cannot learn it in one day or one week. This is something that you got to continue to learn and to study until death come upon you. As long as you're still alive, you got to continue to study the Tawheed because this is the foundation. This is the most important things in this deen of Islam. Without the correct Aqeedah, without the sound Tawheed, every deed will be of no benefit. Doesn't matter how much you pray, how much money you spend, how many Ramadans you have fasted, Mondays and Thursdays, how many times you made Hajj. But if you have problems in your belief, in your creed, in your Aqeedah, then that's a big problem. And he has to be fixed. And how is fixed? Through knowledge. So therefore, it's very important. What Tawheed, who سبحانه وتعالى بالعبادة وإفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بما يختص به What is Tawheed? Tawheed is that you single out Allah سبحانه وتعالى in worship To single out Allah سبحانه وتعالى in that which is only for Allah in His Lordship in His Lordship Rububiyya you believe with certainty from your heart that Allah is the creator alone nobody share with him anything in the creation nobody creates with Allah nobody share anything when he comes to the creation and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al malik lil kawm he has a dominion over all things nobody share anything else with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this universe. And likewise, Allah huwa al-mudabbir. Huwa al-khaliq, al-malik, al-mudabbir. Allah is the one who run and govern the universe. The alternation of the day and the night, the rain, the snow, the sun, the heat, the plants, the oceans, and all of these things. The storms, the earthquakes, beautiful days, and the like. People are born, others are dead, people are sick, while others are healthy. It's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one besides Allah can bring the, the sun from the east. No one can send the rain down or, or stop the sun from coming from the east. For instance, 
No one can change this alternation of day and night. It's very important for us to know these things. We single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His Lordship. Likewise in His worship, by worshiping Him alone. Since He alone creates and has the dominion over all things, no one share with Him in anything, and He alone govern and run the whole universe. So He alone deserves to be worshipped. This is very important. He alone deserves to be worshipped. And likewise, the Tawheed and Asma was Sifat. The Tawheed. You believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has beautiful names, the most beautiful names and lofty attributes. And no one share with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any of his names and attributes. But we, there is a qaida here, a principle that we affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the names and attributes, we affirm for Allah what he himself subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed for himself in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And we keep saying the Quran and the Sunnah because the Quran alone is not enough. If some, because some people they think, yes, there is throughout the history, all right, for centuries and for years, there is certain people they say, just Quran, they call them, they call them the Quran Yun. They call themselves the Quran Yun, they are not even Quran Yun. And I tell you why they are not even Quran Yun. There is a group of people, they call themselves Al Quran Yun, meaning they say, listen, we follow the Quran and that's it. There's no need for Sunnah. Hadith? No. Don't bring us no knowledge. Now I ask you a question. You think these people are truthful in their claim when they call themselves Quran Yun? You think they are speaking the truth when they say they follow the Quran? No, they are not. Why? Because in the Quran we have so many ayahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. Allah says, Ati'u Allah wa Ati'u Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Or so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ يعني عن أمر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تصيبهم فتنة أو يصيبهم عذاب عليم Warn those people who go against the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Because if they do so, they reject it, they don't act upon it These people, they be afflicted by a trial of fitna or a severe punishment touch them Also, Allah says فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَدَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Allah says, Nay, by your Lord, they will not be believers unless they put you on Muhammad وسلم, as a judge in their affairs and then they will find no resistance, no opposition whatsoever as related to what you say and what you judge. Rather, they submit willingly to your decision. Now, this is the Sunnah. In his lifetime, people go to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After his death, people don't go to his grave, like some ignorant people do. They go to his grave, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, Muhammad, give me. Some people, they even write letters. SubhanAllah. People, they go make letters. They go for Hajj, and they stop by Medina. They make letters, and they want to like, throw it like this by the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu This is not from the Sunnah, but rather we were commanded to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu His teachings. Likewise, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells us in the Qur'an, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُدُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Allah is telling us in the Qur'an, this is for those people who think, listen man, we don't need no Sunnah, no Hadith, just Qur'an. Now here is the Qur'an that they say, they follow the Qur'an and they call themselves Qur'aniyun, then you say to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, 
whatsoever the Messenger of Allah give you, command you, take it, act upon it. And whatsoever he forbade you from, leave it alone. Subhanallah. So this is very important. If someone says it's enough the Quran, that person will never worship Allah. Never. Because Allah command us to follow what is revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what's revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is two things, the Quran and the Sunnah. Why the Sunnah? Because Allah says in Surah Al-Najm, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not speak out of his desires, this man, this Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu he does not speak out of his desires. It's all revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no such thing Quran yun. <coughs> La. Actually the ulama they says not acting upon the sunnah and believing that the sunnah is no need for it that's an act of disbelief billah. That's an act of disbelief. And beside the point how could a person perform actions of worship without the sunnah? Alright somebody those people who who says they are only Quran yun they're not going to pray the way we pray. They're not going to pray the way we pray. They're not going to fast the way we fast. They're not going to perform hajj the way we perform hajj. They're not going to give the zakat the way we give the zakat. You know why? Because, yes, there is a command for us to pray. But how to pray? The Prophet ﷺ explained it. Because Allah said, لِتُبَيِّنِ يُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet so that you make clear to the people that which he was revealed to them. That's the job of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to make clear to the thing to the people, but by the way of the revelation. Those who think that they follow only the Quran, not the Sunnah, they will not be able to fast correctly, make Hajj correctly, pay the zakat correctly. Because the commands in the Quran, but many details are not in the Quran, but they are not in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anyway, we just want to open that window and try to make that clarification. So we affirm to Allah subhanahu wa taala names and attributes that Allah affirmed for Himself. If Allah affirmed for Himself something, we should never deny it. But there is different groups that they, they, they deny Allah's names and attributes. Allah, Allah don't have his names and attributes. Now we affirm for Allah what he affirmed for himself. Or whether in his book or in the sunnah, the sound sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, Without likening those names and attributes to any of the creation. Without distorting the meaning and changing them. Like because this is some different groups they do this. And without saying how or why or the like. So this is very important for us to understand. Naam, so that was the first advice we give to our sisters in Islam, at tawheed And that's the first advice, and that's the middle advice, and that's the last advice. Tawheed. And we could stop right here. And we could continue to talk about the Tawheed. And we will never end talking about Tawheed. But inshallah ta'ala, this is not a class about just Tawheed. But alhamdulillah, there is Kitab al-Tawheed of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad Abdul Wahab. You can, you can, alhamdulillah, if you don't have that book, get it. And it's translated in many, in many uh, uh, languages. Kitab al-Tawheed. There is another book, Al-Qawl al-Mufid fi Adilat al-Tawheed of Shaykh al-Islam, Allah of the Shaykh from Yemen, Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab al-Wasabi al-Abdali. There is the Talatat Usul, the three fundamental principles. Translate uh, the explanation of Shaykh Muhammad bin Salih al-Uthaymeen Rahimahullah There is another book by Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan Aqeedat al-Tawheed And there is many books I'm just giving you some examples So you can get a hand of this Because while you're studying Tawheed Also those books they teach you the opposite of Tawheed The Shirk And also they teach you The things that Take away from Tawheed It doesn't nullify it But it makes it weak and, 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 and diminish from the, the, the value, the, the, the reward. These are very good books, Kitab al-Tawheed of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. 
Not any name, because some other people, deviant groups, they have uh, come up with books and called them Kitab al-Tawheed. Or Thalatat Usul, of the same Shaykh. Or Al-Qawaid Al-Arba, and the like. ثُمَّ عَلَمِي بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكِ And you need to know, my dear sister in Islam, and this is for all of us, but I'm just addressing the sisters and giving these advices, that it is very important for you to know that this deen of Islam is the deen that Allah is pleased for His servants. قال الله تعالى إن الدين عند الله الإسلام The deen with Allah is Islam. The religion that Allah has chosen for His servants is Islam. And Allah does not accept any other Allah does not accept any other religion. So therefore, you don't say like some Muslims who don't understand, they say, no, we Muslims, it's okay. To be Christian is okay. To be Jew, it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's not okay with Allah, the creator of the heaven and the earth, it should not be okay with you, nor with me. There is no such thing, everybody is good, as long as you have good manners, you don't cheat, you don't lie. No, you have to worship. These people, they lie, they don't lie to you, but they, they lie against Allah, the Creator. See how we look at things sometimes? Well, He never lied to me. It doesn't matter, He lied to you, don't lie to you. He lies to the Creator by ascribing partners with Allah, by ascribing son to Allah. That's a lie against Allah. Are we going to just wait until somebody lied to me? Now I'm going to be all mad? And, and, and No, no, no. People, they lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very important for us to understand this thing. Islam is the only religion that Allah accepts from the servants. Naam, the people in the time of Musa, mashallah, if they follow what Musa alayhi salam brought from Allah, that's Islam. Likewise, the people in the time of Isa alayhi salam, if they followed what Isa alayhi salam said to them and brought to them from Allah, they were Muslims upon Islam. Yes. The Christians, those people who follow what Isa alayhi salam was upon, then the Prophet then they are Muslims upon Islam. They are Muslims upon Islam. Likewise, the people who follow what Musa alayhi salam brought to them from Allah, then they are Muslims at that time. Because what is Islam? Is to submit yourself to Allah by worshipping Allah based on what Allah legislated. And how we know what Allah has legislated? By the way of the messengers alayhi salatu wasalam. But after sending the Prophet ﷺ and revealing to him the book, the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not accepting anything else. Even if somebody now, even if somebody acts upon the teachings of Isa alayhi salam, not the falsehood that the Christians are upon these days, the Trinity and all that. Even if you find somebody who, who worship in Allah, he said to you, look, I know all of what these people here they teach in the churches is falsehood, is shirk. Isa is not a son of God, he is not a God. Isa السلام, is a prophet and a messenger from Allah, from one God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yes, I believe in that and I am following his teachings. Still, that person is not, shouldn't do that and cannot do this. Why? Because after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Allah does not accept from anything else. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has abrogated all different other messengers. Uh, messages. So knowing that the Deen of Al Islam is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, is from Allah. So therefore, no one has the right to add anything to it, to take anything away from it. We're supposed to act upon Islam in its entirety. And if we're not acting on something as we have shortcomings, then it's not because of Islam. 
is because of us, our negligence. And we have to try to work on our negligence, on our shortcomings, our deficiencies, to strive. If we get it wrong today, let us try better tomorrow. If we cannot climb uh, today, let us make a little extra effort tomorrow. And turning to Allah, asking Allah, being sincere, and this is how it's going to happen, insha'Allah ta'ala. So, when it comes to Islam, there is no such thing, uh, there is a version of Muslims in this country or the other country, or this part of the world or the other parts. Everybody, the human being and the jinn, we were all commanded to follow Islam, the correct Islam that the Prophet ﷺ brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Islam is preserved in the Qur'an and in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in the way. And we, we act upon the Qur'an and the sunnah according to the understanding of the Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhim and whoever followed them upon their good. So therefore it will bring me to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We have to know the importance of the sunnah in Islam. We know we need to know the status of, of Sunnah in Islam. Following the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is an obligation, it's not an option. As we mentioned earlier, there is so many ayats in the Quran that command us to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. So why here is a question once again for those people who say no, there is no need for the Sunnah. So why Allah would send the Prophet Muhammad and this man will, will go through hardship and fight and all this for 23 years. Why? So what is the purpose? Why? You think Allah will do something for no reason? We're just trying to help those people. But as for us, alhamdulillah, and tawfiq is from Allah. Allah guide us to the sunnah, alhamdulillah, the same way we believe in the Qur'an, we believe in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. Also, we believe in the way of the companions because they are the best of this of this Ummah by text, of course, from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he command us to hold on firm to his Sunnah. Especially in the Hadith, when the Prophet Sallallahu was addressing the companions and he said to them, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا The Prophet Sallallahu he was addressing the companions and said to them, those among you who will live longer, meaning after me, after him, way after him, especially after the after his death, the death of Abu Bakr and Umar, and the first Khilafah of, of the first uh, uh, part of the Khilafah of Uthman. But after that, a lot of problems happen, a lot of difference. Muslims, but they acting upon different things. The Prophet Sallallahu he says. You will see a lot of differences. But what is the, this is the disease. What is the cure? He says, hold on firm to my sunnah. What keep you safe from division? What keep you firm upon the only path that leads to the jannah? If you hold on to the sunnah. We understand. We live in a, in a time the Muslims unfortunately are not acting upon the correct Islam, all of them. Even here in America, even maybe in your state, in sometimes in one town. Alhamdulillah in this town you have one masjid and that's an advantage for you. And regardless, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the sisters but the brother they can benefit from this as well. So you as a sister, as a woman in Islam, when you come to the masjid for Jumu'ah or for a class on the Eid, and you look around, and you may be from one country, but you look around and you can, you can count at least 10 different countries, or 15, or 20, or more or less. That's a ni'mah from Allah. Yes, you can be from different countries, no problem, because Allah created us like that. We're not all from the same country. We come from different backgrounds. We have different skin colors. We look different. We have different dialects. Yeah, we speak English, 
But then other people have other dialects. Some speak Urdu, some speak uh, Somali, some speak, you know, broken some dialect Arabs. Even the Arabs themselves, they have different dialects. The Palestinians, they speak in a way. The Egyptians, in a different way. The Moroccans, another way. The Yemenis, they have their dialect and the like. We have different food. Naam. The food of the Moroccans is not the food of the Egyptians, nor is the food of the Pakistanis, nor is the food of the Guyanese and Trinidadians and the like. It's okay to have these differences, but it's not okay to divide our religion. Naam. Yes, I may say to you, or you may say to me, oh, that's your food, uh, I can eat it. Oh, that's your dialect, I don't speak it. <laughs> right? Oh, that's your country, I'm not from it. But I cannot tell you, and I'm not expect from you to tell me, oh, that's your religion. No. Oh, that's your way to understand it. Oh, that's your way to worship Allah. Because in our country, Bangladesh, we have our own way. In my country, Morocco, we have our own way. In my country, Senegal, we have our own way. In my country, this or that. No, this is not acceptable. This is not acceptable. Yes, we respect your dialect. You speak another dialect, Alhamdulillah, it's okay with us. You have some traditions, as long as it doesn't go against Islam, it's okay with us. We accept that from you. You look different, your skin color is different than mine, or that the next sister, it's okay with us. But you gotta practice Islam, all of us, one way. Which way? Are we gonna toss the coin? Or put like a... a or, or the majority, like they do it in some communities. Who's, who's, who's more in here? The Arabs are more? Okay, the Arab way. Now the Pakistanis suffer, the Americans suffer, the Somalis suffer, huh? the Turkeys suffer. No! Or now because in a community the Pakistanis are the majority, now they gotta do it their way. Unfortunately, it's happening in some messages and some communities. And that's wrong. It should not be the way. It should be one way. The right way. The way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us. Allah tells us, hold on, all of you together to the rope of Allah. And don't be divided. Don't split your ranks. So now your sisters, doesn't matter what background you may come. But still, you have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right way, the only way, the way that Allah has legislated. I understand. You may grow up thinking about Islam in your way, the way that you grow up. But look now, you got to study Islam. And you find something that you've been doing that is wrong, admit it, correct the mistake, and move on. Never ever turn down the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ because you want to hold on to what your parents were upon, what your family were upon, what your country were upon, what your so-called madhab was upon. Because that's what actually caused problems. Because people, they like, listen man, why you got to do it your way? We have our own way. SubhanAllah, we're not cooking chicken biryani here, right? All right. Okay, if, let's say, can I give an example? If there is sisters in one community, let's say, let's say, some sisters, they said, okay, we're getting together, and we're going to cook some chicken for the masjid, all right? One sister from Pakistan, another sister from Palestine, a sister from Yemen, all right? African-American sister, a Chinese sister, they're Muslims by the way, okay? A Moroccan sister. What else? A Somali sister. A Spanish sister from Puerto Rico, from Mexico. All right, now these sisters, they all gonna bring chicken. We give them some chicken and we tell them cook it and bring it. Well, what do you think? We have eight sisters from eight different countries and we told them all cook the chicken and bring it. You think we're gonna have the same chicken cooked? I don't think so. 
What the Pakistani, the, the sister from Pakistan, what's she going to cook? Or from Bangladesh? The best food. That's <laughs> Allah. There is an Arab brother giving the sisters <laughs> the best food, mashallah. All of it is the, the best, inshallah. But what they, would, what they would cook, what is called? Biryani, right? Chicken curry. Chicken curry, biryani, what is masala? Chicken korma. Masala. Chicken korma. All right, an African American sister will call, will bring a korma chicken. No, she's not going to bring it. What an African American sister will bring? Fried. Baked chicken, right? Baked or fried, right? Yes, that's okay. It's okay with us. But what if she bring a, a korma? Are we going to say, ah, where you bring this from? Maybe she learned it. The same way. I'm just giving this as an example. But when it comes to Islam, the African American sister don't bring her version of Islam. Nor the sister from Bangladesh or Pakistan or India bring their own version of Islam. Nor the sister from China. By the way, I forget what the Chinese will bring. Orange. General salt chicken, orange, orange chicken. Yeah, that's how you guys know. It's good to know these things. Now the Chinese sister, she gonna tell us, listen. She gonna tell the sisters in the Musalla, listen, sister. In China, we 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 worship Allah this way. Now the Moroccan sister is gonna <coughs> say, listen, guys, you do whatever you wanna do. We're doing it this way. And then the Caucasian sister, they say, listen, no, you guys don't know even. We do it our way. And then the Yemeni do it their way. The Somali sisters do it their way. That's division. This is wrong. Cook different food. You speak different dialects. You look different. It's all okay with us. It's supposed to be okay with you sisters. But when it comes to the deen, you got to make an effort to learn the right religion. And at that time, take your traditions. Whatever you grow up upon, check it to Islam. If you find something that you learn in your country, in your area, in your family, if it agrees with Islam, Alhamdulillah. If Islam says this is okay, it's okay. But if it's not okay, leave it alone. Correct yourself. And now you have a great job and responsibility on your shoulder. Now because you get a correct try to correct your family. The same thing applies for the brothers, by the way. So the sunnah is very important. And we stay away from innovations. What is an innovation? Anything that we do, and he has no dalil from the Quran, nor from the sunnah of the Prophet. We cannot worship Allah based on traditions, based on customs based on ignorance, even though some of the customs are very famous. Some innovations are supported by countries. Many countries shared in that. Does it give it the, the okay to be from Islam? No. An innovation always stay in innovation, even if billions of people practice it. And why is it an innovation? Because it has no proof from the Quran and the Sunnah. If somebody says, no, we have a proof, Therefore, if they bring a proof from the Quran and Sunnah, so it's not an innovation anymore. <laughs> because it is, it is in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing I want to advise my sister so we can open the door to just uh, read their questions. Because when it comes to the question and answers, I don't guarantee any answers. But I do, inshallah ta'ala, do my best to read. And if I know something about from the ulama, inshallah ta'ala, we do that. If not, I will tell you simply, I don't know. And I'm not shy to say that, that I don't know. I will tell it to you ten times. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay? That was only five, by the way, okay? Tayyip. Time two. But now we're going to advise you again. Being a sister, being a woman, you can be a grandmother, and you can be a mother. This is very important for you. That's a great responsibility. That you're going to spend time with your children. If you're married, obey your husband. This is very important. In that which is pleasing to Allah. Don't give your husband a hard time. Don't you try to take the responsibility and the position that Allah has put him in. 
If you have problem with it, investigate. If you have issues, read about it. But that's why. But if Allah says yes, your husband, you should obey him. The Prophet ﷺ said you should obey your husband and be nice and kind to him. You should have no problem with that. This is how you're going to get to the Jannah. Likewise, if you have children, you have a great responsibility, the greatest job. Some women said, now nah, I gotta get a job. What job? You have the best job. Educating the children, nurturing them. What do you want to do? You want to go get a job, and your husband have a job, and who's taking care of the children? Daycare, right? I call it don't care. Because who cares about your children? Not daycare, that's a don't care. People, they're there for the money, that's it. They're for the money. Who's going to take care of your children? You think, you think just watching, that's what you do at home? Do you just tell your child, sit down, go over there, don't touch that, lay down, don't talk to me. That's what usually many people do in daycare. Sit down over there. And they're looking at the clock. Four o'clock. No. You as a mother, you teach, you cook, you feed them, you give them affection. The way you talk to them, the way you smile, the way you hug them, the way you do things. That stuff is very important for them to grow normal people, stable in their lives. Those who are deprived from, from affections, oh, may Allah have mercy on them. Likewise, if you're a young sister, you have advantage. You grow up upon Islam and you read more Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't say, I'm young, I'm going to have my life. Thank you. Yes, the sisters, if you write and start sending the question, that would be nice, inshallah. Don't say, I'm still young, and when I be 30, when I be 40, then I'm going to be a good sister. Let me have fun. Let me have my life. No, you can't do that. Who told you you're going to live until you be 40? That is certain. Tomorrow is not. You can have fun, but still do it the way that is pleasing to Allah. Islam doesn't say stay in a corner all, all your life. You can have fun, you can do good things, but you're just going to do it the way that is pleasing to Allah, not the way that is pleasing to shaitan. There is no fun when you do the way of shaitan. Likewise, as sisters, when you come to the masjid, you respect each other. You respect your elders. The sisters that are elder amongst you, you respect them. That's a right. Yes, you the younger sisters, that's a right. Those older sisters they have over you, you respect them. You address them with respect, with good manners. You behave nicely around them. You don't try to give them hard times. This is not good for you. You be nice. Likewise, you be nice to your parents. You be kind and gentle and you listen. And you invest some of your time in reading the Qur'an, studying the books. Like we say, we start with the Aqeedah, Kitab al-Tawheed, Talatat al-Usur, Three Fundamental Principles, the Four Hadith of Imam al-Nawawi, Umdat al-Ahkam, Bulugh al-Maram. Naam. You spend your time learning, because that's what's going to help you, insha'Allah ta'ala. And I guess this will be enough, insha'Allah ta'ala, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our sisters in Islam and preserve them and especially in this life uh, in our in our time times of fitan and trials we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and preserve our women whether they be our mothers our grandmothers our wives our daughters our sisters our cousins may Allah protect them Ameen. and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them firmness on this deen of Islam may Allah give them patience because we parents or husbands, sometimes we can be, you know, we, we're supposed to protect them and make their lives easier. But some of us, we need to learn a lot. We need to learn a lot. May Allah protect us all and teach us our religion. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfirullah wa